Hello and welcome! Since you clicked on this video, I guess you are very interested to see how to generate long-form story-like videos with this new model from Google AI called Fenaki. Unlike the moving pictures we have seen in our last explanation video about Meta AI's Make a Video and Google's Imagine Video, Fenaki can generate longer videos from a sequence of text prompts and animate movies with changing scenes. And do you know what's crazy about Fenaki? It's not based on diffusion models. <laughs> oh yes, this is surprising Miss Coffee Bean since AI art generation recently has been dominated by diffusion models. In this video we will explain what Fenaki is if not a diffusion model and how it works to generate potentially endless videos. But first, let's thank Task AI, the sponsor of today's video. Task AI is an innovative ultra-scale data labeling platform that leverages millions of online users to task for digital content consumption. Based on years of data science and machine learning practice and expertise, Task AI developed a unique method to logically break down complex data to micro-tasks with simple decision data points, this way eliminating most mistakes and ensuring high-quality results with high confidence scores. The micro-tasks are routed to millions of global filtered online users for labeling and then aggregated intelligently to create high-quality labeled datasets faster and more cost cost-effective than any other solution. Task AI incentivizes online humans from more than 200 countries and supports dozens of languages, offering its clients diverse unbiased results as well as specific geo-targeted locations. Task AI assists dozens of the most innovative data science teams to solve the bottleneck of labeled datasets faster and more cost-effectively without compromising on quality in a fair and ethical manner to accelerate the development of AI. What are you waiting for? Check out Task AI with the link in the description below. Great, now back to explaining Fenaki. Now, how hard is this problem of generating long videos from text descriptions? It's quite hard for a lot of reasons. Here are a few. Videos are more than just a sequence of images, they are a sequence of coherent images. For example, it is hard to make the object shown in the first frames look like in the last frames, of course by accounting that the viewpoint onto the object might have changed. Here you see an example where Fanaki struggles with generating coherent video in terms of the color of the water, the exact details of the teddy bear. Another problem is the availability of training data. We have recently seen diffusion models generating amazing images from text descriptions. Image generation is not an easy problem either, but there are lots of available training data for this. Just think of all images and their captions on the internet. The best thing about image captions is that they do describe what we see in the images. This is very much unlike most of the text associated with video. The most frequent type of text attached next to videos are subtitles of what is being spoken, but it's mostly not a text description of the visual scene or of what is happening in the video, meaning that it is harder to find datasets of videos paired with text descriptions. It is not impossible though, Fenaki's authors cite for example WebVid of around 10 million videos annotated with text descriptions. But if we are to find long videos annotated with text, then we are out of luck and we start complaining about the inexistence of data and imagine here we have Google complaining about not enough data. Ok then, if we don't have long video data, then we will train a model without it. Or this is the point of Fenaki's authors. The idea is to train Fenaki on short videos of around 1.4 seconds and have the model iteratively produce a next short video from a next prompt, but as a continuation of the last one. By doing this many, many times, one can produce minute-long videos and even potentially infinitely long videos if we were to continue this iteration until infinity. And this, even if the model was trained on only short videos. Ok, but how? Let's get into more detail. What is Fenaki if not a diffusion model? Let's think about it quickly by answering the following question. What is the leading architecture of today that has taken over every modality? 
<laughs> yes, you're right, Transformers, obviously, then we will not be too surprised to find out that Fenaki is a system composed of multiple Transformers. To produce video, we start from the text. We are doing deep learning here, so every modality should be represented as a vector. The authors use a pre-trained T5X language model to produce word vectors from the text. And this will be somehow combined with video to train to produce video from text. But we cannot understand that yet without first seeing how to process video in the first place. Fenaki's video processing is composed of two parts. For the video part, we first have a transformer that knows something about video only. You can think of this first transformer called CVIVIT as of a neural video encoder, or as Miss Coffee Bean likes to say, a dimensionality reducer on steroids. Its job is to take in a video, which is this huge chunk of data composed of many frames, and translate it into smaller dimensional video embeddings, in other words, video tokens. The second transformer, called MaskGit, takes these video embeddings of CVIVIT, and with the text embeddings, it produces continuations of the videos matching the text description. This was Fenaki at a high level. Now let's get into more detail. How does the CVIVIT work? We remember the goal of this part of Fenaki is to reduce the dimensionality of the video data. So it is an encoder-decoder model trained on just video data, no text here, to compress the video with the encoder into video embeddings and decompress it back to video again with the decoder. The idea here with CVIVIT is to have a general purpose video encoder that having seen lots of video data and having learned about the visual world, can encode any video into video tokens and decode this back into video, but we stress the authors want this encoder-decoder to work for any video, meaning for variable length video, so they decide for an autoregressive architecture. In other words, they take the VIVIT architecture from prior work and make it causal, so autoregressive, reconstructing video from left to right. The encoder takes in a sequence of video frames, so ordered images. It extracts patches from the first frame, and video patches, so stacks of patches at the same position through time, from the rest of the video. The encoder applies a linear transformation of these patches to reduce the dimensionality to D. Transformer layers along the spatial dimensions with all-to-all -all attention, so left to right, combine the information of each patch with information from its neighboring patches in the same frame. So now every patch is contextualized into its own frame. The transformer layers along the temporal dimension combine each patch at a certain position with the patches at the same position that come from the previous frames. Keep in mind that we are not allowed here to look into the future. This is why the attention is causal here, meaning that we only look to past frames for each given patch at a certain frame t. Why is this causal attention important? Because it allows us to embed variable length videos, including videos of only one frame, so images. It means that the temporal transformer layers on the image do not do much, but it also means that the authors can train C VI VIT not only on videos, but also on images, extending the amount of data immensely and therefore teaching C VI VIT as much about the visual world as possible. The C VI VIT decoder then is a, we cite, upside down version of the encoder, meaning that all the encoder operations are applied in the reverse direction in the decoder to map back to the pixel space of the video. Okay, so now we have explained CVIVIT that trained on lots of video and images and has learned something about the visual world and can map video to lower dimensional vectors that hopefully capture the semantics of the video because we need these semantic video embeddings to work with them in the actual text-to-image generation transformer, the mask git. Mask git is not a new architecture, it has already been established in previous work. When thinking about mask git, it is useful to think about BERT a bit, so about mask language modeling. But now it's multimodal. It takes in paired text and video and trains to reproduce the video as following. 
The model's input for the text are the embeddings produced by the pre-trained T5X language model. Then the video input are the video tokens as produced by CVIVIT. And now you see the role of CVIVIT. Basically, now this mask transformer can work with very low dimensional semantic representations of video. During training, the authors mask a ratio of the video tokens with mask tokens and teach the network to reproduce the mask video tokens. Very much like BERT. To produce video from text during inference, the model takes in the text embeddings and just mask tokens instead of video tokens, since no video is produced yet. In a first step, it unmasks all video tokens. The CVIVIT decoder can take the produced video tokens and decode them back to frames. Are we done? No, since each mask token is predicted in parallel here, thus it doesn't depend on the predictions of other mask tokens, we have an output here that is much likely incoherent. So the authors discard some of the predictions and mask a large fraction of the predictions and let the model predict them again. But since now some video tokens are already predicted, the next predictions are informed of the video tokens from the last iteration and, of course, the text. So now the frames should be more coherent. And in about 12 to 48 steps of predicting all video tokens and masking a fraction again, Maskit produced the end video. This was how Maskit produced short videos as the authors trained it on short videos paired with text description, since there is not much data for longer form videos. But to produce long videos, the authors apply Maskit iteratively by first taking in a sentence, no video yet, and letting Maskit produce the video as described previously. To prolong the video, it takes in a new sentence description in the last frames of the previously produced video and predicts a continuation of the video, so mask tokens. You see how this procedure can go on and on to produce longer and longer video with just linear scaling of compute. To produce a three times longer video, one has to apply mask it three times, which is a benevolent scaling unlike what a transformer applied on longer sequences would give us which is quadratic scaling due to the attention layer. And this was it from us about how Fenaki works. We will not get into a lot of detail of the evaluation of this model since we think this is uh, where the paper really looks unfinished, like the authors were in a hurry to get it out as soon as possible. And the hurry makes sense. Fenaki was published on the same day with another video generating model from Google called Imagine Video. See our previous videos for this which is a diffusion model capable of producing short videos, which are much like animated images. And Fenaki and Imagine Video came out really soon after Meta AI published their Imagine Video competitor called Make a Video. For the explanation of those two models and about the timeline of diffusion models, we can leave you to watch our previous video, which is exactly about this. See you next time!